Welcome to the documentary version of the Balladonia Telegraph Station in Homestead. When you travel around this great country of Australia, you will certainly pass by this historic site. Balladonia is situated at the west end of the famous 90 mile straight stretch of highway and actually governs the trajectory of the road. Historically, all traffic would stop at this station on their journey across this near waterless nullarbor long before it became an important telecommunications hub. The air highway then heads northwest to Fraser Range, the next water opportunity. Water has almost always dictated the shape of roads in Australia. Stephen Ponton and John Sharp were the first white Australian settlers to discover Balladonia Rock on the 8th of August 1879. Thanks to the help of an Aboriginal friend they named Noah, who described where to find it. The Aboriginals named this rock Balladonia. Though someone in the Lands Department must have thought Balladonia was easier to pronounce, as they claimed Balladonia was a spelling mistake. The Ponton brothers and John Sharp, who were originally convicts together before they got into partnership, took up this 350,000 acre lease making them the largest landholders in the Israelite Bay area. On their many attempts to find Balladonia Rock, coming from their lease at Pine Hill, they discovered also Balbinia, Buanya Rock, and Nanambinia. We will conduct documentaries of these places in later episodes. The Telegraph Station is situated on lot number 4022 and is surrounded by a stone wall that was constructed in 1897. This same year saw the arrival of a piano that would have been housed in the homestead located 700 metres to the northeast of the Telegraph Station building. The station itself was part of the Iron Line, the first link from Norsemen of the communications to the eastern states. The first being the original in 1877 line by the coast. Details of that milestone for the country can be found in the Lonesome Road series. Telegraphy was conducted here between 1896 to 1927. Thereafter, telephony and facsimile were in full effect transmitting greater distances aside the train line north of here. Though this line bypassed Balladonia as a repeater point, lines remained active during the war times of the 1940s, after which the lines here began the historical forgotten state. Though in its heyday, Balladonia was staffed around the clock, pushing some 70 messages an hour. During World War I, telegraphers were trusted with the knowledge of even secret government intelligence. During the first two years, the telegraph station was just a small stone hut near the shearing shed while this historical building was being constructed. By 1898, Balladonia Telegraph Station was complete and in high demand, with the first Postmaster General being Mr. Bert Krag. This very wire was the reason for the success of the gold mining boom around the turn of the century bringing word to the world of West Australia's wealth and prosperity. One of the old rusty wrecks here at Balladonia is a 1923 Buick. This very car was used to pick up a journalist named Lance from the Kalgoorlie newspaper, The Western Argus. Lance did an article in early 1924 on the effects of the rabbit infestation the nation was suffering at the time. The other wreck, I believe, is a 1950s Bedford truck. Though the third wreck, I must ask the viewers help in identifying. Please feel free to comment below if you know this one. The complete history of Balladuinia spans some 120 years, 
too many stories for this one episode. With the three founders, William Ponton, brother Stephen Ponton and John Sharp, this era of foundation was brought abruptly to an end after the death of Stephen Ponton in 1901, here at Balladonia itself. Stephen was buried here under a pepper tree his daughter planted just a year earlier. His brother William followed in 1909, dying at Hill Spring, after selling his share of Balladonia to his nephew and John Sharp in 1904. William was buried at Hill Spring. John Sharp sadly passed away just a year later in Albany, February 1910. The Balladonia's ownership remained within the families over the next 100 years, ending in 2001 when it was finally sold by John and Jackie Crocker, who were descendants of one Amy Anna Crocker, who was buried here at Balladonia in 1989. We will speak of her again in episodes to come. That's got to be the creepiest door in the world. <laughs> it's so creepy. <laughs> like it's got all the... Look at this. Who in their right mind would buy that book? I mean, seriously, I, I, I can't imagine anyone would buy that book. I mean, what, what do you expect to learn from that book? How, how dare you just go and advertise your stuff, you know, the, out here, just sticks up this advert and thinks that people are just gonna buy his... Oh, wait. Oh, okay. It's a good book. It's a good book. You should get this. It's a good book. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah, yeah, good book.